Not gonna lie to you, this might be another long one because I have to go in and edit to see if it will actually be a long one. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, but I'm thinking it might be because I have to have examples to show you. I'm not making it up. People defended this, people said anything under the sun, and people are currently grasping at straws. Okay, we clear, don't be afraid that it's too long. I know I usually do about eight to 10 minutes, but this is gonna have to be a long one because people will like to say, no one ever said that, you're making it up. So to those people, eat it. I got a question. When y'all went to school, what y'all was studying? Don't, don't answer that. Listen. Roll the lie. I don't really know. You know, men say we like being lied to. I'm starting to believe them. I don't know. If we like being lied to. We want to be the liars. I don't know. But she did lie. Like, first of all, I recall everything in the receipts on the internet. The internet never forget. But let me tell you what happened. Because I remember. She said she was walking out the club by herself. She didn't even have a friend with her. And she was randomly assaulted by a unknown black man around a group of other people, majority black men. And the man would not give her his phone number and hit her in the face with a brick because she rejected his advances towards her. That was the initial story. Keep up with me. Keep up with me. The first time she was contacted by Houston Police Department, that phone number she provided them was her friend's phone number who was actually with her the entire night. Keep in mind, this woman cannot be identified. Nobody knows who she is. She never came out and tried to cape for Rhoda at all. That very much so key details. Because again, what homegirls do y'all have? This is giving me very much so repeated history alignment with Megan Stack. She ended up having to follow up with them on an investigation while she's still collecting your money she says she could not identify the man she did not think the man would be identified the story changed to say she believed he was an uber driver who was a part of human trafficking and he was attempting to kidnap her now this woman is 33 so i know i know how uber works she's older than me and i know anytime you order an uber there is a log and they can track that log and they give you all the details of the individual picking you up so again here is the other lie then she turned around and said that she had no idea who this man was well details show that she was in the club with this man they walked outside together she was dancing on this man they were engaged together in a very intimate manner and they had been in a car together prior the video came out and said she hit him first so while y'all running with this she was assaulted she was assaulted no she got her ass hit back your mama told you to keep your hands to yourself. I know she said it. I know she said it because we black. They said the same thing. They said, when you go to school, don't you put your hands on nobody first. But if they hit you, you tear their ass up. I remember that's what they said. I know that's what they said because even my aunties had said that. That's what they had said. And if you grew up black, you know that's how they go. You keep your hands to yourself until somebody hit you. And then you show out. So why y'all got to feel like this lady needs some type of indication? No, she's a scammer. She's also currently fighting charges of domestic violence and aggravated assault like at this very moment. Like she has a current criminal record open where she is fighting charges in Houston for domestic violence and aggravated assault. She was the aggressor. You know what? I'm going to just say it. As a black woman, you ain't got to stand behind everything. Everything ain't everything ain't meant for us to just be like, oh, you know what? That's my bitch. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a ride. No, sometimes you need to get out the car. Sometimes you need to get out the car. Cause some of these women gonna have y'all doing some time like a nigga pushing pee. One thing about that emotional intelligence, they don't tell you it comes with humility, but it definitely comes with deflection. And it's a skill if you know how to do it right. But let me tell you something. Some of y'all are not good at it. And your, your ex ain't looking like the narcissist you claim he is. He looking like you was just intentionally oblivious. That's what it looked like. Because there's no way you got all this all this details. And you telling me that you, you so smart, you so wise, and you're intentionally being obtuse because you want a certain narrative to stick. Sometimes it is really okay to say I fucked up. Sometimes it is so big of you to say I got this wrong. I jumped to conclusions. I didn't have all the facts. Learn to listen. Learn to listen here, okay? 
I just want to say this the morning of January 18th, 2024, that you're going to see a lot of people misconstrue this article that came out about Brick Lady. They're going to talk about how there wasn't added information about how she went to the police and reported it or how she went to the hospital and reported it. They're going to talk about how it was a black woman that wrote the article. They're going to talk about how much they hate black men. They're going to bring up some false equivalency. None of these people are going to bring up the second article that came out the same day, which debunks the entire concept of her her being a victim and somebody not being able to handle rejection. None of these people are going to be as loud as they were when this first happened just to say, hey, back the wrong horse, jumped on this full throttle, my bad, I'm sorry, we'll do better next time. Because the smart thing is to do that. The dumb thing is to look at a bunch of people and come up with false equivalencies, talk about how black men can't do this, can't do that, talk about how black women can't do this, can't do that, instead of just saying, hey, we believe this 100% without additional information, and then once that additional information came out, we instead should say, yeah, back the wrong horse there, my bad. Woman known as Brick Lady charged in Houston after being accused of making the whole thing up, raising 42000 So nobody read the article though, huh? Consciously, when are you going to apologize because that little heifer was scamming? I told you she was scamming. She was lying. When are you going to apologize? The apology better be as loud as the support for her too. And before we even get into what the article proves and disproves, let's state the obvious. A lot of y'all don't have as much hope and legitimacy into the system or the legal process until it's about disproving support of a black woman. Then all of a sudden, y'all become legal advocates because just a couple of days ago, y'all was all about Martin Luther Majors being the victim of the system because his victim lied about the details in which how it happened. The article proves that she was assaulted, but that she did not give the correct details about how it happened. According to charging documents, Osman and Douglas were in an argument and Douglas reportedly swung his right hand while holding what appeared to be a plastic bottle and struck Osman in the face. Now, why is the headline written in the way to presume she made the whole thing up when the article itself states that she was assaulted, but that she allegedly lied about how she was assaulted? So for the people in the back. The reason why she's being charged with fraud is because law enforcement has said, no, you were assaulted, but you lying about how you said you was assaulted. Therefore, all the money you raised is fraud, which literally leaves me scratching my goddamn head. Now, the GoFundMe that is being called into question was about helping her recover and paying for medical bills because she was assaulted. Now, the article itself states that she was assaulted. So what a fraud come in. So y'all going to piss on my hand and tell me it's raining, huh? The article also states they were able to find video of the defendant and another person who they believed was the accused assaulter. They got in the car. They both got out the car. The defendant slapped the male who responded by slapping her back. He did have a water bottle on his hand, and we think that's what left a mark on her face. But it was mutual combat. That's what they said. So they charged this woman with fraud because she said she was hit by a brick. But they said she was hit by a water bottle. But they do acknowledge she was hit. They do acknowledge it was marks left on her face. So she can't get a GoFundMe to take care of what put what? And then this really the part that had me scratching my ass. TikToker provi TikTokers provide police information on Osman false claims past alleged scams. During the investigation, detectives said they received call from Daphne Sutton, a mental health advocate and blogger on TikTok, who believed Osman was conducting a scam because similar situation happened in Minneapolis in 2020. Daphne Sutton, the queen of accountability that literally made about 30, you know what I'm saying, it's exaggeration, I say probably like 10 to 15 different Twitter videos about her calling Houston law enforcement and saying, hey, Ro, yeah, she's scamming, queen of accountability. So according to law enforcement, it was a plastic water bottle that left this mark on her face. Not no saline, not no injections, not that she made it up, like it was a water bottle apparently. Second thing. They claim in the article it was mutual combat, that's what the law enforcement said, but one individual had a object, the other one did not, and the individual that had an object was a man, but it's mutual combat. Interesting. So the problem so far with 
Conscious Lee and many others who are going to play this game is they're speaking as if this whole thing is one article. The problem is that he's reading parts of this from one article, which is fine, but he's not letting you know that he's reading it from a completely separate article that also gives more information about this. When he's talking about the questions and he's putting it in bold and he's reading out that it was mutual combat, he's not letting you know that this is from a second article that came out from someone else who wrote a whole different thing. Because if you remember, the person who wrote the first article about this was a black woman, the most disrespected group in American history. So when you play this game of trying to act all high and mighty because people are coming to you and saying, you should correct the record just a little bit, you have to do it in an honest manner because the Bush League way he's going about doing this is pathetic and sad. What is so great about not only this person, but the many other people who are going to grasp at straws to make it seem like this woman is still the victim, they're glossing over the really important fact that she initiated contact first, so anybody with a brain can say she assaulted him first, and he responded by assaulting back. And the reason why I'm a little bit pissed off is because you won't have these same people who were so loud months ago be loud about how wrong they were. Sally this triggers me in thinking about the say her name hashtag and why it was created. The say her name hashtag was created to highlight the lack of mobility when it comes to black women that are brutalized in our community and how we are usually quicker to mobilize around the fear, tears, and brutality to black men's bodies. This is one of the videos right here that's been circulating on Twitter that's tried to justify this woman being this woman being hit with a brick because she stagely slapped this man in an obviously video that this person right here consensually took part of. For debate's sake, let's say this video was not staged and she actually did this to this man. Do y'all believe that would justify her getting hit in the brick with potential blood force trauma that would literally almost take her life away? Does that justify? You know what's funny about that is that many people, me included, were saying just these skits are not reasons for her to be getting hit upside her head with a brick by somebody else. And it turns out, while this is still a skit, the circumstances did fit. She put her hands on somebody and she got smacked for it. So I will admit, while I was in the ballpark, I didn't hit the home run there. That's how you get back on your platform and say, oops, got this detail somewhat wrong, but can still fit in the line of other people being right. She scammed us, she lied, just like Carly Russell. All you simps and panders is out there going at black men, trying to get us to put ourselves out there for a black woman that we ain't related to and we ain't putting that me to. Oh, y'all tripping. That's what y'all sound like to me. Research over me search, let's get into it. There's still people that believe this story. She has multiple videos up of her having a similar allergic reaction. She has multiple GoFundMe with similar incidents and her friend, they say she a scammer. There's no police report. The owner of the restaurant said that's not on them. There's no blood after the being brick. Come on guys, we are CSI social media investigators and we graduated from YouTube University. How y'all gonna tall out us on our investigation? Now look. I'm in that camp because all that, oh, she had saline and she poked herself. She had a mask on. She went to the bathroom and injected herself. All of that was a crock of nonsense that came from TikTok live streams where nobody could verify it. I remember that. And I remember saying to people, you should not bet at all on something like that. Y'all even believe somebody who told the story and wasn't even in the same state. You can't be doing something like that. But it's funny how you got that goofy ass shirt on and you are not not giving people the right information and you're skewing it to fit your narrative and not letting people fully understand she hit somebody and got hit back. I know you saw it at the beginning of the video, but I need to say it again in my beautiful black voice. It needs to be said, y'all mama's raised y'all. Don't put your hands on nobody. And for you people in the South, just like me, you didn't heard this part before and I'ma repeat it for you again now that you grown adults or you a bunch of young adolescent youth walking around thinking you hot shit. Always remember, don't start no shit, won't be no shit. Y'all saw a funky, nasty spirited white woman barely get up out of bed, sleep still on the eye, to make a video discrediting a black woman who said that she was the victim of a brutal, violent attack. Not sharing any reputable sources, right? No credible sources, no proof, no evidence, just theories and vibes. Just theories and vibes, and that's who's shedding light on this entire scenario. That's who you're listening to. 
Okay, black people are trying to have a conversation about how we we protect black women and this random white woman inserts herself and that's who you decide to listen to. The context to this, children, is when this whole brick story first was starting to gain traction, there was some white woman out there coming up with videos saying, yo, here's what I think happened, and we're not supposed to believe this brick lady. And guess what? If you want to have conversations about how white people need to stay out of black people's businesses, guess what? Go ahead and do that. You're going to look stupid, and I'm going to talk about your stupidity another day. But... When you're sitting here speaking very candidly about this, and then when a black woman is the one who came out with the article we are all fixated on now, and you discredit her, it makes me understand that no matter the skin color, no matter the gender, you just want to believe somebody who told you a story from miles away, and you're going to believe them wholeheartedly. You're not going to ask questions. You're not going to wait for further details, and you will do that rather than just want to be someone who just waits because it's more important to believe random strangers on the internet cool glad i could understand that type of mindset and for the people who have probably been loudly saying it in the comments if you happen to go there and type your frustrations at me if you're someone who will look at this and say i'm still going to do the work in believing people who come out with stories do that and if i haven't illustrated this i'll do it now I'm not mad at you for doing that and still doing that. I will be mad at you if you choose not to at least raise an eyebrow if the story starts to smell like shit. Instead of the black woman that had the video of the night that it happened and a video of her in the hospital and a video of, of her hospital reports, right, her medical records. We already know y'all don't like to listen to medical records because Meg Thee Stallion showed medical records, right? And Meg Thee Stallion showed her foot after damage of it getting shot and you still didn't believe her then. I had a video for every single time that man threatened, harassed me, or attacked me, I would be able to make a three-part trilogy film series. And you would still call me a liar. You would still call all these other black women liars like you already do. Don't believe black women, and it's getting old, okay? The plot line is running stale. You do everything you can to discredit us, whether we have evidence or not, and you'll listen to people who you know you don't know typically trust, right? Y'all don't typically trust white women because before, before, white women, you know they do. You can talk about and grasp at any straw that you want saying, she was still here, so why are y'all attacking her and saying she has to show medical records? Because she was making this story bigger than what it seemed. Some people were believing it, some people were being skeptical, some people for some reason were making this about how they don't want to date black men or black women, which is the stupidest thing y'all could have possibly done when all any of y'all had to do was wait. But no, you didn't want to wait, you wanted to dig your heels into the ground, and now look at a bunch of you, either right or wrong. And the sad what is about the people that's wrong they're going to pick anything out of the article and make sure that that will be the thing that they hang on they won't address anything else they won't address how this was a crock of shit they won't bring up anything that's in the article that directly contradicts this story from somebody getting hit with a brick because they rejected a number and they got almost kidnapped and no black men wanted to help them they're just gonna fix it on uh she actually did get hit just so you all know it just wasn't with a brick it was with a water bottle so you should also pay attention to how she was assaulted and you're all just trying to hurt and discredit a black woman stop this shit just stop it you don't have to do it like this you don't have to be one of these people dying on this hill all you gotta say is back the wrong horse but because you motherfuckers don't want to do that and you want to make these tiktok responses because people on your ass because you was one of the loudest people saying i'm sticking up for this person and y'all kind of weird and y'all don't really respect black women the, the way y'all say y'all do new donation I from the gentleman break it's pathetic it truly is. It's sad. But y'all going to do it. Y'all going to sit here. Y'all going to do y'all little think pieces about how black men in the wrong, black women in the wrong, when you should just fucking say this based on the evidence the police have. Not you fuckers on TikTok, but the police have it. They went through it and they broadcast this shit to you. You got it wrong. Take their fucking word and go based off of that. Don't go based off of your random pot chain smoking. Don't go based off of your TikTok live streams. Go based on the evidence they are providing you about this situation you cared about so much. Don't turn around and say, how about y'all focus on real issues of assault? No! You made this real. You made it important. Now it's time to get bit in the ass. Nothing else. Nothing more. Nothing less. So the news just broke that Rhoda Osmond, the lady known as Brick Lady, who got hit in the face around September and claimed that, you know, it was a lot of black men standing around. Nobody did anything. Getting charged with a felony.
or theft by deception. She made the entire story up about her being randomly assaulted. Nobody else could document the assault. The friends that were with her all of a sudden disappeared. Long story short, she claimed she was hit by an Uber driver where initially she said the guy was trying to talk to her and, you know, he was expressing romantic interest. Turns out she said it was an Uber driver and he was trying to kidnap her and other women and she believed that he was invested into human trafficking. This lady conjured up well over $42,000 and this is from regular everyday average Americans who are easily swayed <laughs> easily swayed by emotional stories okay i completely understand this but i want to point out something else very very interesting in this whole entire scenario you guys went on a rampage and tarnished and diminished black men for just simply wanting to assess this situation logically before they made any rapid judgments about who and how they should be protecting someone so much to the point where the conversations went to hey listen the men who protect you are men around the proximity of you in your environment those are the men that you should be looking to aid and get protection from and in the event that those men are not present don't expect a stranger to do it you should be taking the necessary skills to protect yourself I'll leave something on y'all mind we three for three with black women making some egregious false allegations that are getting a lot of widespread coverage ftn bay and duty low that's the story of the girl who falsely accused her rapper baby daddy of sexually molesting their child carly russell the black girl who says she saw a baby on the side of the road just because she was trying to get her man back and this rhoda osmond the lady who said that a random black man attacked her for no reason and other black men stood around she demonized black men for not assisting and aiding in her. I want to really make y'all aware, right? Like, at some point, we got to look introspectively. This is not nobody else's issue, but black women. Like, what do we do about this collectively? If we don't have other black women to help us take protect black women seriously, how are we going to convince other people to do it? You know, what do we need to do in order to actually make this a reality so other people will not make a mockery of us when it comes to this and by other people i mean black men protect black women is not going to be taken serious until we can get black women to stop bandwagging it onto black women who don't help us get the protect the moral of the story goes like this Stop being bitter to the point where you're just going to believe random stories 100% of the time. If you are going to be like that and evidence comes out that completely derails everything you believed in for days, weeks, months, even years, just say, oops, got this wrong, got this part of the story wrong. Don't be trying to scapegoat this. Don't be trying to piece everything together. And just so that we're all clear, because I feel like I didn't stress this point enough, your bitterness towards the opposite sex means fucking nothing. Also, don't bring up other things to try to make your point seem stronger. It don't work when you have a story that you believed 100% of somebody almost being kidnapped and getting hit upside the head with a brick because she didn't give a phone number when all of that was a crock of shit. Subscribe to the channel. Get the fuck out my face.